well. Hey yo guys, welcome to another educational video. Today we're going to be playing Vex versus Kiana. We're going to start lane with a little bit of an HP disadvantage, which means that it requires us to play extremely well. The good news is that we are significantly stronger than the Kiana in level 1. And this is because we already know she started Q, so she can't necessarily walk up with the range disadvantage that she has. So if she ever uses her Q like that in the minion wave, it's just a bunch of free damage. So it's really important that we take advantage of that. And the real goal is that when you're playing Vex in the early level 1 for 3 against winning matchups is that you want to try and punish them as hard as you can. So... The ideal situation is that whenever they walk up to last hit minions, you're able to create space. Because if I walk away when this minion's dying, then they'll just take the minion for free. But if I walk forward, then I creep pressure. It makes it harder for them to approach the wave. Now, this is a dangerous thing to do in a Kindred game, because Kindreds will commonly level 2 gank. But we still have a little bit of time. If she level 2 ganks, honestly, she deserves the kill. But every time she walks up to last hit here, this is a free opportunity to just poke her out. And the really cool thing about this is if we don't need priority, which we kind of do because we see that Diana's playing super aggressively like this. And that's going to be first blood, which is pretty poggers. So she's got 11 CS, which means she's skipped her small raptors here, but she has done all of her bot side camps. Oh, she's fucking doomed. Yeah, she's just fucked. It sucks that the blue resets, but I kind of have to reset here. This is bouncing back to us, so we're basically losing nothing here if uh, Kian is not able to shove in this next wave. So it's already a really bad start for the enemy team, and this is something that we've achieved just by applying really hard pressure level 1 for level 2. What she should have done here is she should have crashed this wave so that I lost more for rotating like that. Because now her jungle and she dies for free. And I basically lost nothing for it. I lose maybe 5 or 6 minions in exchange for 600 gold. Like, that is a lot. And yeah, they definitely should respect the possible realm here. Now, just because they're probably invading, I'm going to push this just in case I need to roam. Because if I leave, it's going to be in an awkward spot. Yeah, I'm going to lose CS here, which is unlucky, but... This is super dangerous for her because she has no flash. I can actually flash this wall here. And killing him would be the ideal scene here. Yeah, this, this game is just Dumo. Now, I do lose I do lose minions, so it's a really improper roam from me. I end up losing entire wave 6 minions, about 105 gold. We do end up getting an assist, but like... The goal there would have been identifying the fact that they were going to commit for that play and making sure that we were able to move for it. So that's partially my fault that I ended up losing 6 or 7 minions there. And it's the only reason why I'm technically even with the Kiana even though I have a massive CS advantage. I feel like Zenzel is definitely better than Rek'Sai and top lane, but jungle I think Rek'Sai is pretty strong. But we do have vision on bottom side, we see Kindred is top side, which means it's really hard for Kiana to walk up right now. As long as we have information about where this uh, Rek'Sai, not the Rek'Sai, but the, the Kindred is, this gives us as much free control as we want because she can't necessarily engage into us when she has an item deficit like this. Now the bad news is I have a lot of gold in my inventory I haven't necessarily spent yet, so... She technically could still kill me since she has really high AD and attack values. But I do believe we have a CS advantage, so as long as she doesn't hit 6 before me, there's really no chance I think she can solo kill me. But we do know Kindred is above us, so that's something that we have to do by playing around that potential gank from topside. Which is why you see me playing heavily on the bottom over here. But it does mean that we're not putting a, a lot of pressure onto the Kiana at all. But... She has to walk up here if she wants lots of these range minions. But this should be a free roam here, honestly. I know she has no flash, I'm just gonna go and lead in with alt. The moment she used her jump, there's no way for her to dodge that, so we just immediately lead with alt. 
This is a suicide play, by the way. <laughs> no, I can't believe she outplayed me with such a common combo. This game is pretty much like we won the game off of our mid rooms early, so I don't feel too bad about accidentally dying there. <laughs> she's actually a level up now, even though she's literally the reason why her team lost. She single-handedly lost her jungle of the game and then still managed to get a kill, so it's almost like she's playing well. But Ayo, it's a pretty interesting four-man row mid lane for something that seems awfully conditional. It's okay, I'm getting plates, a lot of money. I'm kinda- I'm still confused why we're even here, but... I do have access to Ignite, so I'm not really afraid of the Kiana right now. I've got Seapot ticking on her, so it's hard for me to go for an auto during that time frame. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting room. I will come in. Yeah. I'm just gonna get as close as I can before casting my ultimate. And just go and bounce out. He just wants the minion wave over me. We're gonna go and push this though. And this is going to crash, which means that enemy Karthus will end up losing some CS here, and then eventually this will bounce back. There's a world here where I take plate, but I am kind of lazy at this given moment. And taking plate does put me out of position, especially because I just want to reset into mid lane here. So this is a really interesting first item. is a Hex Drinker and also a Null Mantle. So it looks like we're going Void Staff second this game, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not going bottom. It's a much more... It's very significant for me to be mid, because I'm a roaming champion. I cannot roam from bottom as well. This is pretty, like, this Leon is omega out of position, though. Like, extremely out of position. It should just be a gin ult, honestly. I'm just wasting a whole bunch of time here, because my bard can't stay in bot lane for more than 5 seconds. Like, sure, we're getting a kill out of this, but you have to remember that I'm just losing minions mid the whole time. Uh, I made a mistake here, so I end up dying for this. I accidentally queued backwards, so I ended up not fearing her at all, and then she just right clicks me to death. So this is one of those things where we literally won the game at level like 2 and then I entered myself and now there's a chance that they could actually play the game out because of that suicide midline. So playing for dopamine or playing for fun, obviously not the best solution, Kappa. It's okay, I would like to kill this person. We don't know where Leona is right now, which is my biggest concern. Because I can't really walk up to her when she has serrated Dirk and I have like no teammates in position. So like right now we have literally not done anything bottom in the last like six minutes in terms of like actually applying pressure. Like I can't even defend the ward because nobody's in position, so... Whoops. Now, she doesn't actually do a lot of damage because she went first out of Maw, but, like, it's still Kiana. And Kiana be Kiana. It's a pretty free roam, though. Nice. And we might even be able to reconnect here with our teammates. And I don't... I think she probably did have ult, but we managed to channel the fear during the time that she could have casted of it.
which is nice. And the reason why I went on Leona there is because she was split from the rest of her teammates. Like, she does have a shit ton of MR, but I thought I could kill her before the rest of her team was able to reconnect. I don't know- she doesn't have ult, but... We want to make sure this wave at least crashes. So we've accomplished that. I've got 2,000 gold, there's no reason for me to stay here. Just go and drop the rift. But yeah, we're definitely going Void Staff this game. It's a bit of a tragedy that we're even forced to do this, but... I'm gonna go Blasting Wand here over the... Amptum for Blighting Jewel, just because I have a lot of gold and I can still kill other people. But Blighting, Blighting Jewel would be more efficient for my particular matchup. So this is a world where I just grab Amptum and hold on to like 400 gold. Pretty nice though, because now we're going to get Ocean Drake off this as well. And there's even a world where I rotate here. I think I'm going to be able to make it in time. But Rise Ult, pretty great tunnel though. Not going to lie. Yeah, I traded one for one for one. That's great, actually. She's got a uh, Prowler's Claw now, so I technically lose regardless of what I do. No, that's that's not true. I still win. It's just that she's level 11 and I'm level 10 because I keep fucking roaming. So, she wins based off of that. Yeah, hopefully they win the 2v1 with there being no Leona there. But mid's missing, so make sure you guys run. Or just use our W here for the shield. It's a good chance for me to catch up in terms of experience, though. And my goal is kind of just to find Kiana. Not Kiana, but like the Kindred in the jungle and try and kill her. You max W second? Yes. Have you been maxing E this whole time? This is just a bit of a Rambo ult. I'm just going to go and take the tower here. Uh, Diana died top side, so that means Kiana is up here and Rise is up here. There's literally nobody who can match me right now. So it's really important that I take some objective and get some gold back on the map. And we'll go and take one more wave here since there's nobody here who can just run me down. We are going to play a little bit carefully and back in the second bush instead of the first, just in case they are degenerates. It does happen like that. But the good news is we now have Void Staff as our second item. Which means we will be able to insta-gib the Kiana, but also do a lot more damage to the rest of the team. But we should just be playing around dragons at this point and playing around me. If we're even team fighting without Vex in the area, I think it's a mistake. Because like I am the most valuable member of this team without a doubt. And they know this, they just choose to ignore it. But they have to rotate towards mid. I can either kill Karthus here, or I can just wait for them on this tower. It really doesn't matter if I kill Karthus, because this guy is literally playing Karthus. So he's just going to press R, regardless of how underwhelming he's playing. But I have nothing else to do mid lane right now, so it is technically just a 100% free kill. And you'll see I just went melee range of W, because there's a world where he dodges my EQ and then becomes a harder combat. But by closing the distance with personal space, it's like impossible for me to mess up there. This is a dangerous route to walk through, because Kiana could wallbang me. Well, I'd actually missed, but I'd really dislike sharing XP mid, like really badly. We do win this. I missed. I'm trash. 
I'm surprised your E went through my fear. That normally doesn't happen. It's supposed to interrupt dashes completely. Like, in spot. That was a really nice side hop backwards, actually. I'm not having a cap. W? No. I was literally like half a second off from being able to save my own life. We're gonna go Rabidons because we're massively ahead. Um, I think realistically going Zonias here is also completely acceptable. But I haven't really been making too many mistakes. Zonias does enable me to play more aggressively and therefore not worry so much about the mistakes, but I think damage output's pretty important when the rest of your team is inconsistent. There's no reason to go Magi's when we're like all playing ahead of the enemy team. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but if I spend 1250 on Magi's and we lose a couple team fights, then I haven't really made much progress in my item round. But mm, we're all decently farmed with all decent itemization. It just makes more sense for me to progress my item route here and play for a longer game. Because, like, we did have a really big dragon advantage and we could just win the game for dragon, but... Looks like it's just common permanent fights mid lane and we're just never grouped for it, so... Alright, I think we just forfeit them, honestly. And we can't win the game because they have a Karthus and a Kindred, and the rest of our teammates did not play this game correctly. It's actually just doomed. Like, what was the point of starting the game with such a massive gold lead and then never fighting around, like, our power spikes? They just got so many picks for literally no reason. Looks like Zanyas was the correct answer this game, since they have two hardcore AD champions. And I could also prevent cart assault. But if I go Zonia's, I'm like 99% confident that I will not do enough damage to kill any of these people. So we're just at like a catch 22. Do I want survivability and trust my teammates, or do I want damage to make sure that we can actually win a team fight off the engage? Well, we probably want to do Baron here, guys. I don't think we, I don't even think we do enough damage to do Baron. <laughs> is it even possible? We do have to kill Rise if he walks up. Is the issue? I don't know if my team's capable of killing the Rise in the scenario. We have the Death Timers. I guess we do a lot of damage to Diana on her passive Moon Silver. It's really bad for me to get hit. Wow, we just get this for free. That's actually really nice. We have to reset for Dragon. If you guys die, we just insta lose the game for no reason. It's okay, we're super massive now. We play for mid lane and then we play for Dragon. And we have stopwatch now, which means I can go for any like insane ult that I want to. Yeah, I didn't realize that Diana's uh, passive damage against monsters is just that broken. I knew she was good, I didn't realize she was that good. Little bit of an awkward uh, engage onto the wrong person, but we just get dragon off of it anyways. If I had hit the Kindred, we probably would have just aced their entire team. They're going for Mark. I don't really care about Mark, honestly. We should be able to pressure at least double tier 2 towers and then maybe an inhibitor off this. This is, um... This is actually a really good timer. So we see that there's two people topside right now. We see Ryze and the Kindred are top. So the fact that the enemy team even tried to fight that with number disadvantage was like super incorrect from them. 
Because now we get two inhibitors since I'm also pushing bottom. And they can't fight the inhibitors because they are currently missing two players. Well, I guess we have to fight them. I suck. <laughs> Wait, can you get a fourth shot? No. Okay. Wait, wait, okay, but like straight up, there was no reason to fight after the inhibitor was already taken. The correct answer was to go take the next inhibitor tower. But the good news is we have enough gold to finish Zonia's instantly, so... Burning the stopwatch there would have been the biggest concern, because we want to make sure we have Zonia's to engage. But thankfully, with the large amount of gold that we've acquired from minions and towers, we're perfectly fine. But I love the fact that this is a perfect example of how like you can completely crush a Kiana by playing correctly, and then just end it by getting bored. <laughs> the gen build? Yeah, this is a really wacky build. Brought to you by Death Stance and Ma Gang. I'm gonna go buy some pinks here. The good news is, uh, honestly, we just played for tier 2 outer. Wow, completely outplayed. This fight really doesn't matter, but it does give us kills, which means we can just end through it. We're just gonna stand on top in W. I missed my W. I feel very ashamed of myself. But we need a bot lane push, and we also need top lane pushed if we want to actually get anything off this team fight that we just did. This is such a shitty feeling. We have four death timers, and not a single one of our waves is pushed, so we're getting nothing done for like the 30 second death, death timers that are here. Worst feeling in the world. So had we all played correctly, like, the fight here doesn't really matter because we don't get anything off of it besides gold. Like, we can just end the game by team fighting around objectives at this point. I'm just gonna use this to disengage tower aggro. Fuck. Wow, my W is a massive shield, hello? Help. <laughs> it's fine. We win the game off of the engage. That's all that really matters. Killing both of them here makes it basically unlosable. He's saving his fourth shot like a good gen. Let's go. The extra Q is unnecessary, but GG well played. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Remember to like and subscribe if you like the content. Appreciate it.